Elena has been uh, now about coming to 20 years in TOC. And uh, from the minute go, she was consumed uh, into it. Uh, she, she started actually in 1999 uh, being involved with the <coughs> uh, Goldratt satellite program. Ellie Goldratt conducted uh, eight sessions over uh, the broadcasting around the world on the eight major subjects of the of the TOC. Uh, it is a quite substantial piece of the body of knowledge. If you haven't uh, watched it, it's still worth uh, watching it because it is giving the full spectrum of uh, what the TOC is. It's not everything because things have been developed since then. Elena was uh, involved in uh, translating the satellite program to, to Russian. Uh, she also translated Ellie's bo books to, to Russian and uh, has been a part of the uh, Goldratt a group for the Baltics. Then she joined the Goldratt schools. We worked together. She was the director for the uh, Russian-speaking countries, and uh, we have been working uh, uh, together for the last nearly 15 years. Uh, <coughs> Elena has a, a, a strong passion and deep understanding of the thinking processes. I think she is one of the leading persons in the whole of the TOC community when it comes to the thinking processes. And that's why she also spent a great deal of <coughs> efforts in putting her understanding uh, for the purpose of the practitioners. All of the books that she wrote are for the advanced uh, practitioners who want to use the thinking processes. Together we built the, the TOC PA and this is to, for all of the practitioners, started with the, the people that, uh, the experts that we trained around the world uh, in conjunction with uh, Goldratt Schools and the Viable Vision uh, project. And the uh, people just wanted to come together and to capture the knowledge and to share the knowledge. <coughs> and here are the, her, the views. Uh, we share the same views, uh, Elena and me, uh, but there are areas by which she is sharper than what I would say. Making things happen, when, when we're talking about a change, then we are talking actually about bringing a new solution to the environment, to our system, to our company. Okay, so that's the change. We have been doing things until today as they are, and we're coming and saying, as of tomorrow, things are changing. And things are changing, it means there are things that must be stopped, and there are things that are new that we haven't done it before. I think that one, one of the characteristics of uh, uh, the TOC, and definitely it came from early, uh, the understanding that if you really want to make an improvement, you must have the courage to look at the reality as it is and to admit to yourself that something is not working, even if it is something that you have built, even if it is something that you are emotionally attached to, if it doesn't work, then maybe it's the time to to uh, stop doing it and start doing something else. And that, that demands a, a courage, this demands leadership, and whenever you're going and, and listen to all of the stories that were said here and that were said before and that were said after, you will see a very visionary and courageous leader that will say, enough is enough, we stop doing that, and we start doing something different. So, 
When we speak about making the uh, change happen, then this really means that the decision about it or the need for the change already has been considered. And we should not mix between the decision and the implementation of the decision. So if we made a decision, that means that already it was uh, known and discussed the new things, what we are going to bring, or what, what the change will bring, what is the current situation, what benefits will it bring, and we dealt with all of the known risks so that it will not bring any harm to our system. So this is very, very fundamental. People are doing it, but not necessarily they are doing it in an explicit way. And if you understand the, the nature of the, the processes that we are using, the managerial processes in developing the solution in, and the implementation of the solution, the, the approach is such that we, first of all, as the managers, as the leaders of the, of the change, we are taking a great deal of burden on our shoulders. We have to understand what is the current situation. We have to know precisely what is wrong, and then we need to, to know what is the solution, why do we do it, what is the logic behind it. So everything, all of the, the, uh, the burden, the, the approach, that we are taking is that as the leaders we have to know everything. We don't need to do everything ourselves, but we need to know everything. I cannot shrug my shoulder and say, ah, I, I just ask the, the, the consultant. He, he said to do it and, and fine, you know, ask him, don't ask me. Uh, or uh, I don't know. It, it sounds to be a good idea. Why not to do it? I know I, I was playing golf, and my my friend told me that they they use this new technique, and uh, and it works beautiful for them. So why not to do that? No. And and the the whole thing is about the fact that somebody should design the the solution, and. Someone is, is going to be <coughs> the engineer of the solution, but there is also the leader of the solution. <laughs> and this is why I'm claiming that when there are a couple, the leader and, in a way, the TOC designer, the TOC engineer together, that can work nicely. <coughs> you know, we, we yesterday started the, the conference talking about the goal. The goal is an, an outstanding book in the sense that when you read it, it makes you think. Many people say, ah, this is actually about me. Yes, and there are people that this year, on, on 2018, read the books that was written in the 1980s, and they say, it is not about this American factory, it's about my factory and it is today. And uh, <coughs> like uh, last August, uh, I got a call from, from a guy, plant manager, and he's saying, uh, hi, I think I'm like Alex Rogo, and I need you, okay? So like the... <coughs> story from yesterday, calling Heinz, Heinz and, and saying, hey, my Jonah, what to do? Uh, it is still valid. By the way, the, the goal was written as a marketing brochure. 
It was a marketing brochure for the Jonah as the super consultant, if you want. And then later on, the idea changed, and I said, no, it is impossible to do so many Jonah consultants. So why won't we take Alex Rogo and give him the tools and the thinking of, a, of Jonah and so that he, he can do it on himself without the dependency on external consultant. And from that was the development of the Jonah program. Okay, Jonah program, or if you go around, you see even the, uh, in, in uh, Colombia, they call it the Alex Rogo program. Uh, but the idea was, why won't we take the, the knowledge, the solution, the thinking, all, everything that Jonah has, and there's no question that Jonah has uh, quite good skills and techniques how to point Alex in the right direction, how to improve the, the company, and give it to the plant managers or to the leaders themselves and so on. Uh, it was a good initiative. I think that we had over 10, 15,000 uh, uh, Jonas that we trained around the world. Uh, but very few of them continued on, on this uh, uh, direction. So, uh, but the basic has not changed. If we want to, to, to have an impact on our system, we need to know what is the problem, what is the solution, what's the implementation plan, and how we go on the continuous improvement. And for that, we need to do the meticulous work, designing work within it. So, then, when we are thinking about it, about the implementation, we are talking more about what obstacles we are going to face in the uh, process of, or in the, uh, a full uh, the flow of implementation, okay? <coughs> and the obstacles may come from the fact that either we have not enough knowledge how to technically implement it, so we can come with a very nice idea, but then we said, okay, technically, how do we go about it? How do we establish the buffers? How we establish the, uh, the, the, the buffer management reporting? What are all of the technical procedures that are associated with that? And the second issue is that how to bring people on board. And when we're saying about the, the, peop the people on board, so we have the person who is designing the, the solution. Fine, I have a solution. But now I have <coughs> to bring on board people that I need their consent, their collaboration, their agreement to that. And there are plenty of them. We are talking about like the owners. Okay. And I have to, to come and, and show to them that I'm going to take a, a different action, okay, sometime to, to promise <coughs> what will be the, the impact on the uh, performance that they are looking for. Okay. Uh, my boss, okay. as I say about my boss, my boss is not always right but my boss is always my boss. So, uh, and we had situation, people will come to the, to the program, sit down and work very hard on, on uh, doing the analysis with the current reality trees and with the core problem and, and after you know, a week or two weeks, we'll go back to the boss and say, boss, look what I've done in my program. And the boss would shrug shoulder and say, was that you need 10 days? Yes, I could have told you in, in two minutes what is the problem and what you need to do about it. Uh, peers, um, 
actually uh, <coughs> said that the, the, the TOC practitioner, usually they are very lonely people in the organization. So you see maybe one, if you're lucky, you are two, where all of the people around you look on you as if you are from a different planet. You know, a and sometime, and that is how, how Philip star started this uh, uh, the day by saying, after a full day of being together in this environment, we probably have been contaminated. Yes, uh, but think about what what happens when uh, a person is going to a program, is sitting five days or ten days in a program of TOC, and is coming back with new terminology, he's talking about constraints, he's talking about throughput, he's talking about all kind of, of you know, words that um, I don't, don't really understand what, what you're, you're talking about, five step of focusing. And when they are coming back from the program to their environment, they are different. Okay? And uh, I think that uh, it looks like a, uh, it was a, a, a book that was written like nearly 200 years ago about change, okay? And this was a very uh, short story, uh, which is called the uh, Flatland. Anyone read it? Flatland. They're talking about change, yes? This is the book about, fla uh, about change. Okay, but this is talking about a uh, world of two dimension and one line from a two dimension world went out to the three dimension and coming back to the two dimension environment and try to explain to them what is a three dimension. Okay? At the end of the story is that they kill him. <laughs> yes? Because it's different. Because they cannot understand. Okay? And in a way, that's what's happening. The more that you know, not about the, the techniques or what are the solutions of the TOC, but on the essence, the logic behind it. And when you start to look on the world through the eyes of cause and effect, and when you ask why, you know precisely what you are looking for in the answer. I want the logic. And they tell you so many things which are around it, but they don't tell you the logic of why do they want to take this action, or why do you do that? Okay? Many times come and, and asking, why have you done what you've done? I don't know. What do you mean? You've done it. Okay? There must be a logic. Yes, but it is not conscious. And to bring it to the conscious, we have to do quite, quite a work about it. So, this <coughs> so we, we, on <coughs> for many years, and now it's going back, I think my first discussion about that was in, in 96, in one of the, the uh, Jonah conferences there, <coughs> is that the relationship that I have with my boss, mm -hmm. with my peers, with my subordinates, okay? That all of them, for different reasons, are trying to tell me, you know what, please stop using this stuff with us. And the major thing that, that is happening is that I'm coming back to the flatland and I'm saying to them, guys, there is a wonderful three dimension and they say, don't, don't, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you ate or drank, yes, but <laughs> yeah, we can't take it on board. <coughs> Contractors, we know the situation. A lot of talking here about, about uh, a especially in, in a project management, <laughs> okay? Ian was talking about the, the contractors. You come and say, hey, let's work together, or hey, there is a buffer there, and said, okay, leave me alone with the buffer. We agreed on this time, that's it. And we may be late, but never will it be earlier than we said. And don't try to cut 
my time. Vendors, clients, investors, all of these people around us, they do not understand what we are talking about. So many times, it is correct, people are taking the goal, push it to them and said, before we talk, just read it. So maybe, you know, we will have some base for a uh, communication on that. So, as I said, there's many uh, times that there is a confusion between the process of decision making and the implementation. Very clearly, there is the pre-decision uh, stage and the post-decision stage. The culture that is the most organized in the pre-decision uh, stage, this is the Japanese uh, culture. Before they are making the decisions, they are <coughs> discussing and presenting and and it can take years before they make the decision. Okay? You think I don't now it's it's changing, but traditionally the uh, the Japanese way was before making a decision even of uh, introducing new supplier to the company from outside Japan. Then they will invite the, the people, the vendors to, to, to Japan. They will host them, discuss with them, and then the people that have been in contact with these vendors will go to a meeting with number one, with the chairman or whatever. He will be sitting and they will present to him. He will not make a comment. He will not interfere. Then discussing, presenting, ideas, whoever says whatever. And then come the point, he says, fine. Thank you very much. Here's my decision. And from there, it moves to the post-decision. When we're talking about TOC, Yes. When we're talking about consensus, consensus for us is the, the use of the process, the pre-decision. And it is the, in the original sort of Roman a way of what the, the consensus means. Consensus does not mean that everybody agrees. Consensus means that everybody that counts has the ability and the right to voice their views. And then the decision is made. And the decision is made by the people that have the authority to make the decision. And as long as the decision is within the law, within the moral code, yes, that's it. So, here's an idea, and people evaluate, they think about it, they bring their views, and then the decision is made. Once the decision is made, we're going to the post a decision, and then sometimes you're talking about let's have like a proof of a, a concept or a pilot project and then we'll do a rollout and then it should become a part of the way that we are operating. This is who we are and this is how we work. Okay? And uh, in the post decision states no room for anyone more to persuade people to implement. It must be go, go, go. The decision has been made and it cannot be continuously challenged and discussed and discussed and discussed. Okay? And even though that you go into a <coughs> earlier uh, material of, of the TOC, you will see there sort of like that there is 
sometimes suggestion to take all of the people against whom all of the logic from the problem, the solution, and the details of the, the implementation, and so on. Uh, but over the years, we, we learn that it's not necessarily that we need uh, to do it all the time. One thing is obvious. The leader and the designer of the solution must know all of the details and must be very confident that this is the right way to do. So, <coughs> many years back, we found that come with a good idea, especially TOC idea. We know that it is good. And then we sense like resistance to change. And we saw that the resistance to change is like an onion. You peel one layer, you find another layer. You peel another layer. Because of that, we are talking about the six layers. First of all is uh, the first layer is the disagreement on the problem. You come and say, oh, well, well, we have a big problem. I said, come on, this is not a problem, leave it. The other performance is not 100%, uh, 60%. What's the problem? OTIF, yes. Oh, we, yeah, we look on the OTIF. The OTIF is uh, over 80, 90%. I said, how can it be? Ah, the customer agreed to postpone. So the OTIF is measured against the, the last agreement on the delivery date. So they are above 90. Great. No problem. Second, this agreement on the direction of the solution. Okay, and this is definitely where we face. We said, okay, we have a problem, correct, but let's implement SAP. Let's go this direction. Let's go that. And you're coming with, with TOC, then definitely sort of can be, oh, this is where we are stuck. We agree that there is a problem, but we don't want to go the TOC way. There's three. We're not sure that we are going to get the benefits from it. Okay. All of this uh, disagreement is a conceptual <coughs> disagreement. I disagree with you on the problem, on the direction that you, you take, and I don't think that even we'll take these actions, we will get the results. Fine. And then come the yes but. Layer 4 says, ah, but if we will implement it, <laughs> negative consequences will come out of this. And layer 5 is obstacles. Oh, we don't have the time, we don't have the money, we don't have that, we don't have that, and so on. But, um, Lot of obstacles, hundreds of obstacles. Why not to do the things? And the worst of all is layer six. They are quiet. They don't say anything. They say, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Come next week. We have agreed on a set of action, yes. Have you done? No. Why haven't you done? Oh, I had busy issues, I have that, I have that, and so on. Fine, always excuses. But basically, I agree. But I do nothing. This is awful because uh, there's no communication. So once we know that this is how things are manifested, okay, then it is not in order to tell us that it is impossible. It's in order for us to know precisely what we have to do in order to overcome these problems. Because each one of these situations is a blockage. Okay? Because if I don't pass the agreement on the, uh, the problem, <laughs> I will not go further. So within that, layer 1 to 5, this is what we have to take the decision makers through. We have to do the preparation. We have to show them that we have answers to each one of these uh, uh, comments because <laughs> the decision makers, if we don't pass them, that's it. 
So if my interest is to have the solution, I must go through all of these layers. I do need to do the work, and I need to uh, persuade them. But when we are coming to the people, after making the decision, when we're talking in the, the implementation, then we have to deal with layers four to six. <coughs> Rather than then taking them again through the whole spiel. Okay, so if in order to overcome layer one, <coughs> yes, we need to do a current reality tree. Okay? And there are current reality trees that have been built with you know, hundreds of boxes and arrows until you come to the down to the core problem and so on. So you print them on, on a, an A4 uh, sheets and you have eight, nine pages and you take them if then, if then, if then, if then, just to prove to them that you know what is the core problem. I'm uh, not interested. It's a waste of time. They fall asleep after, you know, the first page, and the rest is, is so boring, yeah? So, no need to go through that. Decision has been made. So, now we come, what do you see has to offer for that bit? So, the strategy, what we want to achieve is that management enhance their ability to improve the performance of the system which is under their responsibility. This is sort of like the motto of the ever improve. This is the, 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 the drivers to get us over the gaps that we believe that exist in our system. What is the tactic? What we're going to do it is that we employ the management tools. This slide, yes, is going to overwhelm those that haven't seen it before, okay? But I'll use uh, what the, the, <coughs> uh, the analogy that Johan said, said yesterday. Look on that as, as a Swiss knife, okay? It's basically said it has many blades, but you don't need to use all of them, and you don't need to master all of them, but you need to know that they exist in the case that you will need it. So in order to enhance the ability to improve and convince the people uh, to work with us on the solution, we need, first of all, to have the mindset, which is logic-based management. Everything that we are doing, we are trying to find the logic behind it, the cause and effect. Okay, the connections, the U-shape, the, the cloud, whatever, yes? We are committed to deal with the issue from a logical point of view, okay? Emotion is important, passion is important, and there are things that do work. I don't say that they do work, but in the case that everything that I have as a leader does not work, then I may should consider I should manage this situation. Because remember, this is a huge frustration. You want to improve. You know that system can be improved and you cannot improve. This is a major frustration. So what else can I do? I can be nice to them. I can be nasty to them. I can hit them on the wall. I can threaten them. It doesn't work. What else can I do? Let's, let's go for the logic. Okay? So, then... Understanding the current situation, that's what to change. The future, with its solution, what to change to. The transition, how to cause the change, and then how to build the continuous improvement, and how to grow. Within that, we have the thinking processes. Okay? And for each one of these blocks, we have a whole set of tools. Okay? And it takes years to know them and to master them, okay? This is why there is also the TOC for education. Do you know about TOC for education? TOC for education starts with the thinking processes 
from the age of five in kindergarten that teach them about handling conflicts, that about cause and effect, about negative branches, about ambitious targets, called tactic, tacts, and this is thinking and communication tools. And they are taught all over the, the world. Yeah. So, yes, because when you think about your own education and you said, how much of your education was based on cause and effect and logic? And then you find that if you still remember geometry, maybe yes, that's the only subject that is actually cause and effect. And most of the schools of today do not teach geometric anymore because why the world do you need geometric? So these are all of the tools. And as I said, this is like a Swiss a, a knife. So <coughs> when we're talking about the decision maker, then we must know what to change, what to change to, how to implement it from the technical point of view. And for that, we have all of these tools. Somebody has to do it, OK? Maybe it is the, uh, the, the, the number two in, in, the, in the company. I said, number one for me is the leader, the one with the vision, the one that wants to go forward. And number two is the one that it is meticulous with doing all of the design, engineering design of the solution, with the thinking processes, with whatever it, it, it takes, OK? And Johan correctly yesterday said that he is not the master of all of these thinking tools. And he doesn't need to have that. But someone around him needs to do this work, okay? So that he can distill it for the managerial decision and to, to lead forward. <coughs> so uh, from the standard, we saw our targets. Yes, we have a measurable and, and quantified targets. And then in the actual, we have low performance. Low performance is versus our expectations. If it's make to order, then the on-time delivery or quarterly lead time. If it's make to availability or to stock, is the availability inventory turns. We are unhappy with uh, this level of performance. Okay, and then from the, the process, we know that we have the UDIs, the undesirable effects. These are the problems. We know about these problems, and we try to fix them. And whatever we try does not work. So we declare them as undesirable effects. We know they exist. We try to fix them. They, nevertheless, we didn't manage. So there must be a deeper problem, and we have to dive down. And then we are going through <coughs> the whole process of current reality analysis. I'll not take you through all of this detail. This is well, well documented. Asking ourselves, what is the common cause? How can it be that we have so many, when we say so many in TOC terms, it's if we have seven or 10 undesirable effects, it's already too many, okay? You don't need to have 64 undesirable effects to know that the system is not working. So you ask yourself, what is the common cause? And we know that it is something within us. It's the way that we are operating. Okay? How do we plan? What do we do during the execution? How do we uh, uh, put the a continuous improvement? So this is one of the, the, the most common and well-known uh, <coughs> uh, clouds that is explaining to us what at the bottom there in the ways that we are managing, what conflict are we uh, caught that is preventing us from making good decisions and from sorting out all of these UDIs. So there must be what we call a core cloud, a conflict, conceptual conflict, okay, which is about uh, take expensive corrective actions or stick to the plan. And whatever we do, 
we are bound to fail. Okay? So, we need to sort this one out. So we, we are going and keep on checking that if these expensive corrective actions are causing this a, a undesirable effects or floundering or jumping from sticking to the plan and then taking this ad hoc shooting from the hip uh, actions uh, if they exist together, they are causing all of the difficulties. Okay? And of course, the workforce, they are looking at the manager and said, okay, what do you want me today to do? Stick to the plan or, or do you want me to, to <laughs> deviate and do something else? Okay? Salvage the situation. Be heroic. Okay? So this is what we, we see when we are coming into the, the current reality tree and the logic behind it. <coughs> and other way we are using, if we are using a, as a base of the standard solution, then this already have been developed and checked and recorded and exist in the body of knowledge of who we are. Okay? If we need to find something new, we have to go through the, the whole process. So, for the decision makers, what we are doing is that we are looking on now the steps of decision making, not the resistance, and see how they correspond in the strategy and tactic tree. When we are talking about knowing the problem, in the strategy and tactic trees, we are saying why, what is the logic, the necessary assumption that says you must deal with this problem, you can't leave it. Then you go knowing the direction of the solution. What is the tactics? And justifying that uh, the actions will bring the, the desired benefits, it will be uh, the parallel assumptions, the logic between the actions and the results. And to remove potential negative consequences, we are dealing with all of the known risks to it. This is how the strategy and tactics is answering all of the potential concerns about potential resistance to change. And if we have the answers, that should not be a resistant to this change. Why should we change? Everything is for the positive. Obstacles, we need to know the details of the how. So, <coughs> when we're talking about the people, then if the people disagree, then others are afraid of negative outcome for them, or they don't know how to do it how to make the, the, the change, okay? And we are already in the post-decision stage. So we are dealing with layer four, layer five, and layer six. But <coughs> from all of the tools, we need only to deal with part of the future reality, which is removing the negatives, and removing the obstacles. Okay? And at this point, in the design, we took into account every known negative that can come, and we sort it out. However, what is happening is that many times people do not do, not because they see negative, but they just don't do it. And then you ask yourself, why is it? Okay? And, and you, do, you don't find this is frustrating. But then you find that actually um, they may see inconvenience, but they don't talk about it. And because of that, we have layer six of say yes and do nothing. And we have to understand that. Because we have an organization, we have the goal, the global goal. 
And within that, we have individuals, key individuals, and we, we try to, to point them towards the global goal and draft them into it. But we have to remember that the work is only a part of their life because there is the other part of the life, okay? So they may be local here, but they belong also to another system. And as such, they uh <coughs> The, the other system has, has its own goal. It may be the family, it may be the, 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 the social uh, uh, network that they uh, belong to. And then what is happening is that when they're coming to work, they said, I'm giving you my time as a fair trade to the payment that I'm getting. But my real subordination is to the real system that I belong to, okay? And the problem will start when we will have conflict between the local and the global, okay? And just quickly I say, I, we have a recent situation, one of our long-standing client, the uh, production director says I'm resigning. And the uh, question is that, why, why are you resigning? He said, uh, if I will continue working for, for the company in my position, I will lose my, life, my, my wife. And he resigns. Basically, the conflict, the demands in order to achieve the goal of the company is jeopardizing his personal family life. And then there are people that are either losing the wife or losing the job. He decided not to lose his wife. So, <coughs> So there's why we, if we find a, a resistance to change, we have to, to be frank and ask ourselves, can we, do we understand the, the situation? Maybe this can explain. It's not always like that, but we better look onto that. It depends on your own experience. Okay? So these are the conditions. When this conflict? can happen with the local. If it interferes with the global, does not contribute or not contribute enough, you expect more of them, okay? And they are not willing to give more, <coughs> yes? Even though that it may affect their livelihood and their job security. So, everything that we said, yes, uh, Yelena wrote four books on the thinking processes details for the professionals, okay? <laughs> How to meticulous do the, the thinking processes. <coughs> Here they are, and this is the link. Thank you very much.